Hello, good evening, good morning. Welcome to Ham Radio 2.0, live from the Ham Shack. My name is Jason, and my call sign is Kilo Charlie 5 Hotel Whiskey Bravo, and today we're going to be looking at a new dual band HT from June Tai. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you've seen the videos I've done on uh, the JT6188 Mini Mobile 25 watt radio. Uh, this is the same company who makes that radio, and it's a new HT that that uh, that they've released. And they emailed me and asked me to review it because they saw all the hits that my my video on the on the their Mini Mobile was getting, and they wanted me to review their HT. So I said, sure, yeah, I would. So I I got one from them and. And uh, did some testing on it. We're going to see that here in a second. Um, the reason that it's uh, the reason that other video got so many hits is because the 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 new mini mobile radios at the time of the video are are kind of new and interesting and unique right now. The problem with the HTs is that there's a thousand different brands, variations, models, and styles of HT coming out of China right now, and they're all dual band, two meter, four forty, and they're all five watts, and they're all two hundred channels, uh, hundred hundred twenty eight channels. Some of them are hundred twenty eight, some of them are two hundred channels. And this uh, this radio is really no different. So I think that it's a good radio. It it seems to very be very solid. Uh, it's kind of it's much much. I mean, you take a you get a Baofeng UV five R. You take it out of the box. Well, they say that the first thing you should do when you buy a UV five R, you open up the box, you take the antenna, and you throw it in the trash. You can go get a real antenna for it, and it improves the performance greatly. Uh, plus the fact that a UV five R, you know, if you drop it on the ground, it's going to break into two or three pieces. You sweep it up, and throw it in the trash, and go to another one because they're like thirty bucks on Amazon. This radio is much more rugged. It's much more solid. When I picked it up out of the box, the first thing I thought about it is, you know, this would be a hardy radio to carry around. You know, you can knock it around a little bit, and it's not going to damage it much. And that's true. But other than that, it's not. It's got a really big battery on it too. Um, it's got a. It's got a nice big thick battery that should last a long, long time. Uh, Twenty five hundred milliamps, I think it is. We'll look at that here in a second. But you know, other than that. It's it's a dual band 2 meter 440 HT with 128 channels that does 5 watts per band and, and they're a dime a dozen. They're they're all over uh, Amazon, they're all over ham fests, they're all over the internet and they're all basically the same. So there's nothing really special that I could find about this radio. I think if you were to buy it and use it, you'd be like, "Yeah, okay, it works really well." Um, and it's better than the Bale thing is, but you're going to see what I'm talking about. So but they wanted me to review it, so I told them I would. Uh, I believe they're working on the tri-band version that should be out soon, I believe, um, which will incorporate 220. And there's a, there's a couple other companies who I'm in talks with right now that will be releasing a tri-band HT, 2 meter, 220, 440. And I'll be reviewing those on here because that really interests me. Anything beside, Anything that gets outside of the dual band 2 meter 440 range that does something unique and different besides just those two analog frequencies uh, is is going to get my attention and make me want to review it on this video series. So let's take a look at this and uh, you guys let me know what you think. If anyone has one of these radios already or has used one and has comments on it, um, good or bad, please, uh, please comment on this YouTube video or go check my website at livefromthehamshack.tv. Uh, you can see all the videos I've done there. You can click on each one and read a little history about um, about the radio and why I'm doing the review on that specific radio and how I've used it and where I've used it and that kind of good stuff. And you can comment on the website as well. If you found me on YouTube, uh, go ch go check out that website if you wouldn't mind. It it's got uh, it's got all my my videos on it and and uh, gives you a place where you can. Uh, put in suggestions about uh, new videos that you might want to see me do, tech talks, uh, radio reviews, whatever. So, 73, guys. Hope you enjoy the video. So, this is the JT UV 007 Juntai Dual Band HT. This is a brand new radio. I'm a Juntai dealer, and uh, the Juntai guys, they saw my radio. The name of the company is actually Vitai, V I. T I A or T A I rather V I V I T A I, but they're 
VHF, UHF stuff has been going is Juntai. So, I say it Juntai. I don't know if that's right or not, but... So, the Juntai guys, they saw my video, my episode 5, that I did on the unboxing and testing of the uh, mini mobile radio, their JT6188, and they contacted me and they say, hey, we want you to test our HT. So I'm like, okay, sure. So I got one. I thought I'd test it out. I don't know yet. It's the owner's manual. That's always a nice thing to have. I don't know yet what's so special about this HT. It looks like it's just another dual band HT out of China. Which, as we all know, there's quite a few of those. It does feel pretty darned heavy. Uh, how do you take this battery off? <laughs> it's got a battery on it, but it's got plastic over the battery. Oh, there it is. You slide it down. That's how you do it. So there's that. It almost feels waterproof, but I don't think it is. Looks like it's dead. Okay. Belt clip. Strap. That's pretty hefty charger base there. So, it is a US plug. You gotta be careful about that sometimes. A pretty good, looks like a pretty good gain antenna here. Nice and thick. That isn't... That is a real heavy and heavy duty antenna. It is stamped dual band. So it's it kind of resembles a UV five R, but it feels much, much heavier than a UV five R. Comes with a uh, earpiece. Push to talk earpiece strap. So that's kind of cool. Um, standard Kenwood connector on the side there. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to charge this thing before I can really do anything with it. It's dead out of the box. So, it's got some good grips. That it, it feels, it looks like, if you look at it on the box, it looks like it feels kind of cheap, like a UV5R. But it's actually pretty darn stout, so that may be one thing it has going for it. Let's see voice prompt Chinese and English nobody cares about that I shouldn't say that some people like that if you're vision impaired then you definitely like that I've had some hams call me and say hey does this one talk to you because I can't see well yes it does this one will talk to you so I want to know how many channels are on this thing because I don't really see uh, let's see if there's a... Here we go. Yeah, 100, 128 channels. Right there. Yep. So, 136 to 174, 400 to 480, 128 channels, 5 watt HT. Twenty five hundred milliamp battery. That's kind of... That's different. It does have a 2... Um, 2.5 kilohertz step. So... It's got a pretty good man. That's a pretty thick manual that some of these newer radios out of China, they don't even come with manuals anymore. So let me, it's got a SMA male connector on the top of it with an SMA female antenna. So, got a little flashlight on top, of course. Whatever. Definitely sturdy. So I'm going to plug this up and let it charge, and uh, we'll come back and take a look at it here in a bit. Here we are, charged up. Get to see what it looks like here. With the uh, out of the bag. again, this is pretty. This is pretty rugged feeling radio. Feels like if you dropped it, you would uh, not really hurt it that much at all. That button right there is VFO memory. Switch between A and B with that button. Switch bands with that button. Of course, I'm in memory mode, so that doesn't work. Let's go frequency. Band. Band. 2 meter 440 only. For both the top and bottom. So, it does go up to 512. I 
actually this is only going to 480. I was thinking that the box said it went to 512. I'm probably wrong on that. Two. Box is not saying now. Okay, well, it goes to 480. So there you go. Your uh, menu here is the same as it most of these types of radios. You've got 41 different menus. Zero, actually 42, because it starts at double zero. Double zero is your squelch. And then it goes up from there. That kind of thing. It'll do DCS and both transmit and receive CTCSS and DS and DCS. So if you have different tones on your repeater, whether it's a digital P t PL or a CTCSS PL tone, uh, if you have uh, your encode is one tone and your decode is another tone, it'll do that. That uh, had a discussion with a guy at the ham fest last weekend about a radio that would do that this will do it so let's put the uh, meter on this thing see what it does so the radio has two power settings you hit menu and TXP for power and it takes you straight into menu 2 TXP is transmit power and then you can go low and high so we're going to try low, and we're on 440 now. Let's go to middle of the 440 band. It's doing about 3 watts on low power. This is low power again. Let's zoom in a tad here. There we go. 3 watts on low power, 446.1. And go back up here to no. Let's go to one forty six zero zero, and we're on high power there. We're gonna go change it to low, and write it about two watts on low power on two meters one forty six dot zero. So let's change that to. High power for on uh, two meters, about four and a half watts. One forty-six dot zero on high power is four and a half watts. Go down here to band B. Change that to high. Four forty-six dot one. That's pretty much pegging the meter at five watts. Turn that up there. Let's do about seven watts. About 7 watts on 446.1 on high power, and about 4.5 watts on 146.0 on high power. So like the last couple of radios I reviewed, last couple of Chinese rigs I reviewed, this one's actually doing more power on 440 than it is on 2 meters, which is kind of backwards, but that's okay. That's okay. It uh, probably sounds just fine, I would think. Put, it's got a really cool looking antenna. This antenna is about twice as long as a UV5R antenna. It's got the, the uh, I might have showed you this already, it's got the SMA female on the antenna, SMA male connector on the radio. So let's put this in here and key up a local repeater and see what this does. Uh, um. No, that's not what I want. Okay, and let's go... We're going to go in here. It's on wideband. And... Set the transmit CTCSS to 100. Or 110.9, rather. I'm going to go up here and set the offset to 5.0 megahertz. Okay. 
and the frequency direction should be right there positive okay not key in that repeater set it upright Okay, so it's not key in that repeater, so let's try another one. The November 5 emergency repeater system PL 110.9. Okay, radio check there. KC5 HWB radio test. There may not be anybody listening to it, or I didn't hear the repeater come back to me, actually. There's some interference. I get interference on this repeater on several radios around this area. KC5, HWB radio test. I hear the squelch tail, but I don't hear the courtesy tone coming back to me. So, we may not be able to test from in here. Nope, that one's not going to hit it. Okay, anyway, I'm not going to be able to hit it from in here, which should tell you a little bit. I'm inside the shack, and I can usually hit repeaters from inside the shack, although I've got my I've got my shack set up in here, so I very rarely try to talk on an HT from inside the shack, but I'll go out later and try to key up from outside and get a radio report and see uh, what people say about this. But it is a hefty little radio. Pretty heavy duty with a, a nice bulky antenna to it. So it's what a UV5R would look like if it was built to last, I, I imagine. As you can see, the Juntai JT UV007 is basically the same 2 meter 445 watts, 128 channel radio to come out of China that uh, so many other manufacturers have done to date. Uh, Baofeng was one of the first ones to do it, and th that's why they were su so successful. Everybody knows the name. Waxons were some of the first to do it, but theirs were of the higher quality. Theirs were actually out before the Baofengs, and they were selling for 100 bucks. And I, p I remember I paid $99 for my first Waxon. I'm like, whoa, a dual band HT, 5 watts for 99 bucks? Wow. And then uh, a few months later, the Baofengs came out. But the Waxons are much, much better quality radio than the bail fang is anyway so you're going to see so as, as you just saw this radio is it's not bad it's got a couple of cool features to it like the bigger battery and the and the very rugged heavy feel to it and it's got a really nice antenna on it as well but you know there's nothing really unique and special about it it's uh it's the same thing that every other chinese manufacturer is doing and bail has got 97 versions of their uv5r and uh, there's 97 other companies that are making a radio that looks just exactly like the UV5R. So uh, nothing special, nothing fancy. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if there's any other kind of radios you want me to review, feel free to shoot me an email. Check out my website, uh, grapevineamateurradio.com, uh, for all the product and inventory that I sell. And then for the YouTube series, uh, for, for a complete list of the videos I've done, uh, check out livefromthehamshack.tv. 73, and thank you for watching.